Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Shoto's Bizarre Adventure. It is I, your host, Stella Luna. And Laura said, Hello, everyone. Hello. I know it's been a few weeks. It's been crazy oh little few weeks they hear. Uh, you know, I oh. I know it's been a few weeks in our last episode, but, you know, apologies. Uh, apologies. We've been life having, happened. Yeah. Like, life happened. Uh, you got sick. I and... got sick, yeah. I was voiceless one weekend, and there was the... It happened to be the weekend that Barry was available. To yeah, to we, but so, yes, oh obviously this week we don't have her on because we've been having scheduling conflicts. So it's just, mm -hmm. just haven't had the chance yet. But, you know, it is what it is. But, man, it's been an eventful uh, last few weeks because, ah, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, man, the vocal community has been on fire. <laughs> yeah, it's been... It's been uh, all about I mean, rabbit like, hole Miku. Oh yeah, that has been like a a shit show. To say it the has least. been. Just blah 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 blah. I to me the craziest thing is that this is all blowing up like months after the song was released. Yeah, like, Deco already has a brand new song that just came out. Friday. <laughs> yeah, like literally, well, I, I forgot what it was called, but like, yeah, it came out only a few days ago because, like, mm -hmm. and it's crazy. Oh, what perfect timing for Tekonina. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, but like, yeah, this song came out like nine months ago because, like, I remember this song mm -hmm. like coming out and being like, oh, I really like this song. I kind of want to cover yeah. it at some point, right? Like, I thought it would be really fun to cover the song. And then, you know, uh, at the beginning, I think of last month, or sometime during last month or beginning of this month, I don't remember, uh, a, an animator named Cast Station released a lovely animation of, of uh, Miku in this song. Mm. And it's, it's a good animation. It's great, actually. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's I pretty also, smooth. It's I, cute. I recreated that animation because I, I was like, you know what? I wonder if I can do it. And Lord and behold... I could actually recreate the whole video if I wanted to, but do I have the time for that? No, no, I do not. But it has caused a lot of controversy and it all starts on TikTok. Of course. <laughs> of course it starts on TikTok. And I know if you guys follow me on my personal channel, I have talked about it. I did release a video. But I thought we'd talk about it here on the podcast for those who don't actually, like, maybe who don't, like, watch my videos, which is totally fine. It's, you don't have to watch my videos. If you just listen to the podcast or you're coming across this episode and you literally have no idea who the two of us are, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the thing is, right, with, with Rabbit Hole is it starts on TikTok and the kids on TikTok are upset and for a really weird reason. Yeah. It's, it's very weird because it started this controversy on whether or not Rabbit Hole, the character in Rabbit Hole, is or is not Miku. It became like Miku Gate, let's be real. <laughs> It is okay. This is Miku Gate. This is yeah. Miku Gate 2024. Let's go, baby. Like the discourse around it. I I didn't even know about this. I was not in Miku Gate TikTok. Yeah. I found this out when you streamed it. And I was like, wait, what the oh no, when you messaged me and then I saw your stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea what was going on and uh it made me lose a few brain cells. I'm not going to lie. Oh, my God. The brain cells that I lost during this debate has been a lot. Um, I have lost exactly 39 brain cells. <laughs> yes. Exactly yeah. 39. I'm not left with much. Just one. Just one. But I've lost 39 of them. And basically, I think, personally, this is what I think happened. Is mm. I think there was slight discourse in the song itself having sexual thing themes right mm -hmm. like it's yeah. sexual themes and the animation has some visual innuendos going on 
Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, it looked like, you know, Miku is, get, you know, going to pound town, you know, if you get what I'm saying, but it's not, she's mm -hmm. just riding, she's just riding a little bunny. She ran a little bunny ride. That's all she's doing. Very innocent, very, very say so, if I do say so myself. <laughs> but I think what had happened is that there's a lot of, a lot of mostly minors. I will say there, it's probably mostly minors. Right. Yeah. Or even or newer community, newer like Vocaloid fans who looked at this and were uncomfortable because they're like Miku 16. Right. Yes. Miku is 16. And somebody somewhere started spreading misinformation because they're like, actually, I think this character is not Miku because cast station. Cast sorry, cast station labeled or they titled the video the animation in pure pure mm -hmm. pure pure because yeah. that's the character that they think this Miku is is that her name is pure pure right mm -hmm. and it's like no <laughs> no <laughs> no yeah no no. Cause like they, they got, so, so someone said that and then it just spread like fire. Like it just yeah. spread like fire. And I definitely think that cast station did not like help with this situation because he, he had posted this, this like pinned to like a uh, comment on YouTube. Um, and essentially, let me let me go find it. Let me go let me go read it real quick. Uh, I know it's on the dis our Discord. Yeah, you just shared it. I remember. I did. I did. Oh no! On my end, you became a black screen. <laughs> That's <done>. great. <laughs> you're a black. <laughs> you're a black block right now. <laughs> oh no! She's been blocked out. I blocked her. Live I'm, on like stream. A block. Live on stream. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. 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 Here it is. Here it is. Found it. Um, I'm actually. You found it. I did find it. Okay. So there, you're back now for right now. Uh, so it says the characters in the work are all adults. It is a character that appears in the original MV of the song, and although it borrows Miku's design, it is a separate character that does not follow Miku's age setting. And I think this confused people. Because I, first of all, cast station is not, is not an English speaker. He, mm -hmm. he speaks Japanese. Right? I think this is Google translated, by the way. I, I do, most likely, I, it, yeah. The way this is worded really strikes as like a translation, whether it's like Deep L or Google or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like, although it borrows Miku's design, it is a separate character that does not follow Miku's age setting. I think what he meant to say, what it meant to say was this is a, say, a separate Miku that does not yeah. follow Miku's, Miku's like original age. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's what that reads to me as, uh, especially with how translators work. Uh, yes. That's, that's kind of like what it comes off as. On top of that, I find it weird because like we, we were talking a little bit before, before the podcast about it. Is that if this was a separate character that wasn't the Deco Nina version of Miku, right? That this isn't just like a Deco Nina and Miku, mm -hmm. then he just stole a character design, just straight yeah, up. Yeah, that's a whole that's infringement of someone else's like copyright. Yeah, I like know. I was like, that's that's it's, it. just... it's like it's like oh yeah, this is my OC, which I'm like. Huh? Because like they look exactly the same. Like they, they, yeah. if you were, if you look me straight in the eyes and tell me that they are the that they are not the same, they don't look anything alike. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what's wrong with your eyes. I think you need to go to a doctor. You need to get your eyes checked because like the only difference <laughs> is th how long the pigtails are. And let me tell yeah. you, as somebody who does like live two D rigging and who does like animation, shorter hair is just easier to rig rather than the long hair because i guarantee he did it in a like either in spine or after effects is how he rigged the models uh because he drew it and then he basically rigged it in like after effects and which is something you can do and short hair is just easier to work with 
it's mm-hmm. much easier to work with. So, like, to tell if you tell me that this is not supposed to be the Miku from the original song, then he just straight up stole the character and just made her hair shorter. Yeah. It's not uh. taking his own original OC and putting it... Because, like, here's the other thing, too. Cast Station does a shit ton of Miku animations. So why is it not... This one not Miku, you know? Like, why is this specific one not Miku? But she's singing about sexual themes. She's 16. They would not live the era of, of Spice and gigantic OTN and Holy Lance explosion. <sighs> it's just... Uh, it's so... Like, I know we've had this conversation about, like, Project Sekai fans, and I feel like a lot of them that are arguing that it, this is not Miku, I will guarantee that they are the same Project Sekai fans that we have, <laughs> you they know, probably been are. critical of. They're just, they're new Vocaloid fans. I will say they're incredibly stubborn and do not want to be educated whatsoever. No. Because a one look at... Deco Nina's discography, especially for the past few years, you would know that he has a whole Miku like universe. Yes, like it, it is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but Deco Nina's Cinematic Universe. <laughs> well, like the way that somebody like I saw someone explain it is that it's like the Spider Verse. How yeah, like yeah. anyone mm-hmm. can be Spider Man. It's like yep. anyone could be Miku or like how yes. I explained it, especially in the, my video I made it, I made mm-hmm. was Miku was essentially Barbie. And when mm-hmm. you watch the Barbie movie, every single Barbie in there is Barbie. No, yes. And they all look different, right? Because I saw people going like, well, it can't be Miku because their pigtails are too short and the color of the hair is different than Miku's color. It's not the same color. And I'm like, wow, you would be appalled and shocked by Project Voltage Mikus. None of that. them. And oh also, my gosh, like, so many of them Project do Diva not look like Project Diva as Miku. well. Like, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think about uh, like cat food or uh, I think it's cat food. Because there's, like, one Miku that I can think of at the top of my head where she's, like, wearing a black uh, Sailor Fuku. And she has mm-hmm. short black hair and the bangs are cut straight across. And no pigtails, no not no hint of any type of teal or blue or whatever. It's red and black is the color she's wearing. And that's still Miku. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean for heaven's sakes, Neru is, is technically Miku. And so is Haku as well. They are both technically variants of Miku. Mm-hmm. But like, like just because it's not exactly the same, because I saw someone literally like color picking and like comparing the colors. And I'm just oh, like, come on. I was like, are you kidding me? <gasps> are you I mean, kidding me? Mm-hmm. Are they doing the same thing to the Project Sakai Mikus? Because uh, only two of them have teal hair. The other ones have different color hair too yeah no of course not because they said it's miku that is miku so of course they said Uh it has to be miku right (laughs) because if it's not anyone else it's it's just miku it's just weird to me because it's like i don't know why it's such a weird concept for people to get to to think being like oh well that's miku even though she looks different, you know, like it's the same thing with Barbie. All of them are Barbie. Mm-hmm. And then you have stereotypical Barbie. Yes. And default Miku is stereotypical Miku. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're like, and I just don't understand like why like this misinformation like spread so much. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I think that's what one of the things that like pisses me off the most about like stuff like this is that, like, I know people are like, well, Stella, why do you care so much? Why do you care so much? Well, first of all, it's been my hyper, uh, my hyper focus since, like, I've loved Vocaloid since, like, when I was 13. Like, 13, 14 years old. Which, I'm pretty fucking old now. I'm like, I'm, it, it's been, like, 15 years. Almost 15 yeah. years of me loving Vocaloid. Like, the whole time, right? Uh, but, on top of that, I don't. It worries me how misinformation spreads so easily. Yeah. Like, it's so, like, people will literally go, like, I saw comments that were like, 
oh hey to let you know that this isn't miku this is actually uh this is actually an oc named pier pier and then someone reply to them go oh i didn't know thank you for informing me yeah there's a lot of that and mm -hmm. i'm like whoa so you didn't look this up because when when i saw when someone told like when i saw people saying that this character was pier pier i was like i'm gonna go look that up but turns out mm -hmm. pier pier is literally the lyrics in the song it's in the yeah. first line of the song she says pier pier and like i don't it's just insane yeah and, and this is like the young younger vocaloid fan so it just boggles my brain that there's like no inkling of hey you know let me look this up yes. and just verify like a simple google search i swear it's the same type of fans that go into my videos and ask me where i bought things when i listed in the damn video oh same my people that God. just want to be spoon-fed information yeah. And even if that information is completely inaccurate, they'll be like, okay, yeah, let's roll with it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's go with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, not Miku. That's not Miku. It's the, yeah, it's Miku 16. Of course that wouldn't be Miku. Yeah. It's it, well, first of all, here, first first let's some songs have sexual theming and they can still be teenagers. Like Plus yep. Boy. Because the whole point yep. of Plus Boy is it's about a boy going through puberty and and feeling the feelings in his <laughs> yeah gigantic otn <laughs> <laughs> like that's the point it's supposed to be like a weird like uncomfy song because it's like yeah he's literally he's literally like feeling things for the for the first time you know but then sometimes in other songs they're older they're they're older mm -hmm. and on, on top of that like miku's age and and the vocaloids age in in general are really just up for like they're not there to be like oh they always have to be this age it's kind of just like a guideline and it's also kind of just marketing to be honest yeah and, and it's it's always been marketing and it really worries me that like these newer fans coming in can't grasp that concept because the thing that we love about Vocaloid is that there's a lot of creativity in this space. Mm -hmm, People yes. make amazing songs, like amazing songs that have a lot of emotion and a lot of like really great lyrics and, and instrumentals. And then on mm -hmm. top of that, it's a community that really pushes the creativity in others as well too. And to be able yeah. to like share that creativity, like, you know, when people like I, it's funny because Jojo and I were talking the other day, Mr. Underhill and I were talking and he was like, why is it that all of these big corporate VTubers always cover Vocaloid songs? Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's because Vocaloid is always something that anyone can do. Like anyone can go to any song and go, I really like this song. I want to cover it. You go to that description. You're going to find the instrumental from the producer themselves. Yeah, the producers put them put the instrumentals out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that other people can cover those songs because that's what Vocaloid is about. It's about sharing and creativity, right? But if mm -hmm. we go, well, Miku can only be 16, then we limit creativity. Mm -hmm. And that's concerning, right? It is very concerning, in my opinion, to have that kind of limitation when it comes to these vocaloids when you're like oh well she must look this way and she must act this way and she must um you know she yeah, must it's just mm -hmm. i think a lot of people well a lot of these fans just forget that at the end of the day it's a software yes they're not you know commissioning a teenage girl to sing these lyrics no it's literal software Let's be weird. Let, like, let's be real. Let's be real. Is it not if she, it would be really weird to be able to buy a 16 year old? Yeah. Is that not like that's weird, right? Like to buy yeah. a 16 year old. Like that's that's what it because they're not real. They're not they're not even not they don't real. even have personalities. They're mm -hmm. dolls. They do whatever you want them to do. They're just mascots, right? Because part of it's what... It's the same thing as if you go to like any music store. It's like, okay, 
I'm going to buy a Fender guitar. Yes. That's literally it. That's it. It's, it's, there's no way. <laughs> you could be like, yes, this is my my guitar. Um, Her name is Sally. Uh, the yeah. reason I call her Sally is because I had to stitch her up. Uh, but she's good as new, you know, and she's, uh, you know, like in my mind, she is, uh, you know, she is 21. She's a 20 year old hot lady named Sally. Right. But like, Literally. it's still just an instrument at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Like, it's still it's still an instrument. And yeah, this software just happens to have, you know, an image of this girl wearing teal pigtails and, you know, a dress and. Well, because and that's what, the way it is. That's well, what it makes is. it special too is that people can also they don't even have to buy the software to use mm -hmm. these characters. Yeah, like you don't have to even buy the software. You can go. I really want to make fan art or fan fiction yeah. of these characters. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to do like a cool like fantasy AU where Miku's like a princess and Len is basically Mario, you can. Yeah. You can. Yeah. You know, like, and he goes and saves, saves Miku, you know, from the tower. Um, I mean, there's actually, actually, now that I think about it, there is like a little animated, like, kind of series that ex has existed for like 10 plus years where it's Gakpo and Miku as Mario and Luigi uh, and Mako as Princess Peach. It's really cute. If you haven't checked it out, you should. But anyways. I need um, to check it out. Yeah, it, it's actually very cute. Um, but people anyone can use them right mm -hmm. i think yeah. like if you are so concerned about how like people are using these characters it's always it's all about the intent right if somebody wants to make a song like with len and make it a shotokan song you see the intent there yeah like you see you absolutely see the intent uh, there's like, oh God, what is it? Like there, there's like Shota Shota Island, which is like, or Shota Shota Night, which is a parody of Luka Luka Night Fever. Yeah. And it's like, yes, we, the Vocaloid community in the past has had some problems with some mm -hmm. of that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's for sure. But to be fair, a lot of the people who were fans were also very young at the time. So like, you know, it was. Is a different we were all teenagers and stupid you know now as yeah. adults we're like no 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 but we know better as adults we, yeah. yeah we know better as adults right um but the thing is too is like back then we also didn't have a lot of adults who have been in the fandom for a long time to tell us yeah. like hey don't do that right like mm -hmm. some of the stuff that we used to do i think in the fandom like i didn't do this personally but i i did see this a lot was people would make accounts on youtube and role play as the vocaloids under people's songs and then mm -hmm. they'd be like oh my god i worked so hard on this song and then people would be like oh my god miku i loved you you were so good you did an amazing job acting as if miku was the one who, who wrote the song and produced it <laughs> it's so fucking cringy it's so cringy like people used to like rp all the time as vocaloids i mean we i mean when we had circus p on you know oh yeah the episode oh. he literally got into vocaloid because of role play <laughs> you know so it's not like younger fans can't make mistakes but like the, i think the problem is is they just don't listen when we're like hey yeah like this is you know this is like could be a problem you know mm -hmm. and it's not that we're like trying to parent or whatever but like you know i care about this space a lot like i care about vocaloid a lot mm -hmm. right and the last thing i want to see is somebody people like new fans coming in and changing it for the worse right and and making it so people cannot be creative in this space because they're like but miku was 16 it's like Okay. Well, I think a lot, and I know we've talked about this before in previous episodes. I think there's this big disconnect between the younger fans forgetting how old the producers are. Yes. Like, it's completely normal for an adult to have, you know, a sexual song or something even like tongue in, in cheek as well. Yes. Which I feel like rabbit hole and a lot of 
Deco Nina songs in general are just, they have those sexual in- innuendos, mm-hmm. but they're kind of like cheeky. They're, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you also look at a song like Romeo and Cinderella, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, where I think it is a sexual song, but in a way that's like talking about somebody's like first time and like the trauma that came from mm-hmm. it because mm-hmm. she wasn't ready. Yeah. Right. And like for like a song like that is really important to have because like like a lot of people can relate to that kind of song. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because like in in the context of that song is like she dreams of a fairy tale, essentially. Right. She wants to be. So instead of Romeo and and, and Juliet, which ends in tragedy, she wants to be Romeo and Cinderella. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and she wants to live this fantasy of like, you know, being in love and having her prince and, you know, like, but it, it to me, it feels like in the song, this so-called prince pressures her into having sex. Right. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't know if she's completely ready or not, but she doesn't want to lose him. Right. So she does it anyways. And she like regrets that. Right. She like regrets it and she she feels like bad about it and that it's not like how she imagined it to be. Right. And I think songs like that are so important to have. And if you were just like, well, Miku is 16, so therefore she can never sing about sex. Like we wouldn't get songs like that. You know, we wouldn't get songs like I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Which is Mm an incredibly graphic song. Uh, if you have never heard of it, um, by, uh, Kikuo. Yeah. Kikuo is the one who, who wrote that. And it's basically a song about abuse and sexual abuse from, I think, either a family member, a family member and a boyfriend, like two separate people. Right. And it's incredibly sad, right? It's an incredibly like fucked up song. Um, and kind of, is kind of a, kind of, it doesn't have body horror in it, but it's just like, it is a fucked up song. Like Kiko comes up with fucked up songs, but we wouldn't yeah. have songs like that if we just kept to canon and being like, what's appropriate for a 16 year old, you know? Yeah. It's just it, the limitations that these fans are trying to put into the vocally community for me is concerning. Yes. Because it goes against everything that Vocaloid should be. Yes, absolutely. And I know we're having the same problems in the J Fashion community, actually. Uh huh. Uh, J Fashion has been having these problems where new, well, it's not even like it's younger kids who come in and they are like, well, we have core, like, Co- like cute core mm-hmm. instead of kawaii fashion it's cute core right and and are like doing like fast fashion with it you know like they're trying to get their entire entire wardrobe by going into fast fashion and being like well you know you don't have to stick to the exact rules of it like while like dressing they're saying they're dressing in lolita but really what they're dressing in is like something like it's just frilly it's not like it doesn't follow yeah. like the shapes. It doesn't follow like the structure. It doesn't follow, you know, what Lolita looks like. And yes, on, honestly, like in J fashion, you can experiment and you can take the fashion in other places and even start new fashion trends. Like, um, like there's like Cyber Gyaru, which I really love, which is not a very like popular subculture within Gyaru, but it's still like, but it looks Gyaru because it still follows a lot of Gyaru trends even though it's not like it doesn't follow every single one of them. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But we have people coming in and just being like, oh, it's cute core. Oh, it's, it's this core. Like I saw, I saw the other day, I saw someone say like how to do clean Gyaru. Oh, no. And I, I, I was sitting there dumbfounded, shocked, mortified, Hor- like I was just I was just like I've what seen, the like, heck is that I've seen videos of like clean goth as well yes <laughs> or, or, no no uh, and clean and clean grunge and I'm like uh, clean grunge mean? is like the biggest like oh like dude no I was like what do you mean clean grunge <laughs> clean 
grunge? Are you kidding me? It's like an oxymoron right there. Like, yeah, it is an oxymoron. Well, the same uh, thing with like clean Gyaru, right? Mm. Because they were like subtle makeup, you know, like subtle makeup and like curled hair. And I'm just like, okay, all right. Now we're, we've lost the plot. Like we've just yeah, yeah, yeah. lost the plot here. And it's like these subcultures, these like cult, these communities have existed for a really long time. And like, I don't want to sit here and be like, I'm a boomer. I'm like, boomer, we got to keep things the same back in my day. But like, yes, things change, but the core values should always stay the same. Yeah. Right? Like, mm -hmm. that's the thing. Like, doing clean Gyaru is like, the point of Gyaru is to be out there, is to mm -hmm. be like, because like, people in Japan, like, when it comes to Gyaru, they view them as dirty street yeah. rats right they're not supposed to conform to society's ideal yeah, they're beauty. rebels they're rebels mm -hmm. yes they're, they're they literally rebel right so to be like clean gyaru makes no sense clean That's like a, that would be like the equivalent of having a clean chola which is also a subculture that yes. is rebellious yes it, <laughs> you're just a girl wearing plaid yeah exactly it's just like it's it doesn't make it sense makes because no it sense, goes yeah. against what these subcultures are standing for right mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. when when it's just co commodified essentially and I said, commodified is that the correct word commodified what does commodified mean <laughs> it just <laughs> sounded right so it came out of my mouth uh they are you know they are like people do want to do fast fashion and there's actually uh a a tiktoker that i really like her name's uh addy and mm -hmm. addy harujuku i think is their uh handle and they, they've talked a lot about this as well, too. They're, they do a lot of, uh, like, uh, J fashion, like, content and stuff like that, where it's mm -hmm. just, like, there is a problem that's happening with fast fashion and that, like, a lot of times, like, a lot of kids or young people, like, will go into these fashions and wanting their whole wardrobe, right? All of, all of these cords and all of these, like, just, you know, they just want it now. So they go to things mm -hmm. like Shein, or Timu, yeah. or eBay, or Amazon, and they buy the cheap stuff to have. And, you know, a lot of times they don't want to put money into the actual brands because it, they're too expensive. But the point, but these aren't luxury, or these aren't these aren't needs, they're luxury at the end of the day, you know? Um, on top of that, there's a lot of really, like, young teenagers being weird towards adults who partake take in these fashions and mm -hmm, in these mm -hmm. subcultures and, and basically being like hey, you're too old for that you weirdo and it's like oh i'm sorry I, when i was 15 i didn't have any money <laughs> I, like i was dirt poor like oh so out of luck now i can't spend money on the things that i want to as an adult woman you know you know what i find odd like especially i don't even think a lot of these are gen c i think it's more like Gen Alpha that's being this way now. Well, Gen, but like, it's, it's very, okay. It, it might be like, like very beginning of Gen Alpha and very end of Gen Z. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's why I, I say teenagers like a lot and mm -hmm. not Gen Z because I, I recognize Gen Z is also like, like yeah, I'm, some of them I'm, are in their 20s. I'm literally like one of the youngest millennials that can exist. I think by like one or two, like one year. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I'm always considered a millennial, but like I'm very young millennial. So Gen yeah. Z is not far behind me. That's why mm -hmm. I say teenagers a lot, because a lot of they're kind of a mix right now of alpha and Gen Z together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so but like when let's say when we were teenagers, because yeah. I. I knew of adults that were like goth specifically yeah. that were like. They grew up in the 80s, 90s, and were into the Cure and Depeche Mode and all these things. Yeah. I just wanted to learn from them. Yeah. I didn't think they were weird. They were just, you know. They were cool. They were cool. They, they were, were doing cool their adults. own thing. They were different from, like, my parents who were very, like, straight laced. Like, yeah. I just listened to, like, classic rock, blah, blah, blah. Like, I just thought they were cool. Yeah. There wasn't that weird, like, judgy attitudes coming from our generation towards, like, gen x yeah so it's just odd seeing how teens nowadays are just so like 
I think a lot mm. of it has to do with cringe culture. Yeah. I think they don't want to, mm -hmm. they don't like cringe and they cringe at adults who participate in things that they would find like they're too old for. Therefore, they are cringe because they're participating in things yeah, yeah. that they're too old for. You see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with that? You know what I just found like what? today on TikTok? I should have sent you the video. There is a new app that like teens are pushing that is, is essentially MySpace. No like, fucking way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the profile looks the same. They were like, oh my God, you can add music to your oh profile. You can code it. And then like History the girl has like a, had a, a black and like pink sparkly like profile. Like it was, bro, I thought I had been transported to like... <laughs> Oh, my high school years. 2006. Oh my god. And it's just insane because they're into the stuff that we were into as teens. But yes. if we want to retain part of like those cultures, we're cringy, but they can partake in it for some reason. Yeah. It, it, like the double standard is just not making sense. No, it's it's not. And like, look, I don't expect teenagers to not be cringy, right? Like, mm. I totally get that. Like, I'm like, yes. But I feel like, I feel like a lot of them are really hell, like hell bent over being cringy and like, yeah. they don't want to be cringy. And they're so like, they, they, they want to make themselves look not cringy by telling other people they are cringy. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's just like, oh my God, let us, let us live, man. Like, let us be alive. Let us live. We live in a shithole right now. Oh, where, yeah. Where, like, we're fucking, you know, stuck between a rock and a hard place. Like, I mean, it's it's not looking great, you know? But, like, mm -hmm. you know, we're TikTok from the verge of being banned. And, like, yeah. you know, like, we got a lot of problems. But you know what? It's okay. I got Miku here, you know? Like, I, and it's funny because, like, when I look at, at like, I have a Miku collection here. Well, it's not Miku. It's not just Miku. It's, like, a bunch of figures, right? Like, mm -hmm. when I look at these figures make me so damn happy to have. Yes, yeah. they just sit there, of course. But I mm -hmm. love having them because I love looking at them and going, I have that. That's mine. That's mine. Right? Yeah. And these are things that I've always wanted since I was literally a teenager. I remember as a teenager, I used to sit on my family computer at like the age of 13 and scroll through eBay looking at mm -hmm. sailor moon things all the time like sailor moon cosplays sailor moon proplicas and i was just like oh i really want that like i really want that one day like one day <laughs> just i sitting want they're watching the bids <laughs> yeah like watching the bids and like seeing how much they go for like yeah, and, I, yeah, and yeah. i'm telling you when i looked at when i did that for hours i did that for hours like mm -hmm. not just like oh i just kind of skimmed through it like like the amount of time sync you put into TikTok, I did that with eBay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, even back then, like, I didn't, I didn't have a debit card or access to oh. my parents' credit card like some of these kids do now. No, so, like, not all at all. I would do was just like sit and like window shop. Yes, that's all I did. I window shopped, <laughs> like for literally like all of throughout yeah. my like teenage years. I just would window shop, and it wasn't until I don't think I online shopped till I was like, oh my god, I think I was like eighteen or so. Yeah, I think the first time I ever bought something online, I had a debit card, but my dad monitored the crap out of like my spending. Like it was only like only for emergencies yeah <laughs> and the occasional like if you get dropped off at the mall you can buy yourself something to eat something to drink and maybe something small but don't go crazy that yeah. was basically like the rules back then <laughs> like it, it well because i'm thinking back on when i started like actually buying things online and that's when mm -hmm. i had finally started cosplaying um, and I, that was like on Amazon, I used Amazon. I was like 22. Like yeah, I was, I think I was I, in my twenties when I started 20s, like, really yeah. online shopping. Yeah. And now I'm like, I've bought figures over the years, right? I think my most expensive figure on my shelf right now is my magical Mirai 2019 Miku, uh, because she's a gorgeous figure and she's like, that's literally my favorite magical Mirai is, is 2019. Mm -hmm. And 
yes. Am I, am I basically in my thirties now? Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, but like, I enjoy all of this stuff. Like I bought, you know, like I have my switch over there, you know, I have my, all my Miku and my like Vogeloid stuff, Sailor Moon figures. I have my like Nendroids, my, my little, uh, my mouse pad is Miku. My big giant ass water bottle is literally <laughs> all vocal. Like it's just me. It's, it's the Krypton Lloyds mm-hmm. on it. Uh, you know, my bed frame is pink. <laughs> my bed frame is pink. My like, excuse me. Sorry, my cat just like attacked my hand. I'm like, what are you doing, girl? You know, my my bed sheets are like pink and blue and purple and really cute. You know, like I I have a lot of cute stuff, mm-hmm. and like yeah. I mean, on top of that, I'm literally a VTuber, right? And this is stuff I would have never been able to do as a teenager, right? And mm-hmm. that's the thing I think, like, it makes me, it doesn't make me upset, in fact, of, like, well, they're coming after us, but it makes me upset because they're going to hit our age and they're going to realize, oh, yeah. like, they're going to have, like, crises about, like, whether mm-hmm. or not they should continue liking the things that they like, you Yeah, know? Absolutely. And it's, like, you should just continue to like what you like. Like, it doesn't matter because, like, when you get asked out of high school, the popular kids are no longer popular. Exactly. Yeah. Like anyone who had any sort of like social I guess, standing. So yeah, or clout nowadays, nobody will care who they are after they graduate. No. No, <laughs> absolutely not. No. They just they won't care. Like you just will not care about any of that stuff. Like I mm-hmm. it, I mean, yes, like in a sense, like I think Ooh, who sang the song? Was it Bowling for Soup? Who sa- who sang High School Never Ends? No. Who sang that song? Oh. You know, High School I, I, Never I, I, Ends. I, I, I know the song, but. <laughs> I'm like, I don't remember who, sa- who sang it. But, like, there are, like, when you get into your, like, new groups, like, communities, sometimes that can, at least as a content creator, like, you do yeah. have, like, all oh, these are your cool kids. <laughs> they're, they're the big content oh, yeah. creators, they're, right? Like, they're the I people feel like with... they're still clicks. Like, yeah. I mean, even in work, in work settings, I mean. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. You'll run into clicks. All the time. Throughout your life. You will, yeah. All the, all the time. But um, the other thing, too, is that, like, when it comes to fans, though. Uh-huh. Oh, boy. Sometimes things explode. Like an Oshino Co. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, Lordy. I, it's uh, complicated being an Oshino Co fan. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to preference this right now that I have not read the manga, but I've seen lots of panels and I've seen lots of people's opinions and I've read through I those opinions. I feel like opinions. the spoilers most people have seen because... Yes. It, when it reaches the timeline, like everyone's jumping in on it. Yes. The fanboys, the casual fans, and also the people that just don't even like Oshinoko, but just love to hate on it. Yes. Everyone jumps in. Absolutely. Well, here's the thing, too is like, I, so basically, if you have been living under a rock, this is what's happening. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. Aqua and Ruby kiss. Yeah. <laughs> really fucking weird. Really, really weird. Really mm-hmm. weird. I don't like that. I, there's so many reasons I don't like this. There's so mm-hmm. much to unpack. With the there's whole, a lot to unpack. Thing, uh-huh. Right. Mm-hmm. So of course my initial reaction is like, oh my God, they, they went the incest route. That is. Yeah. Oh my God. Why would you do that? And this was also like, I remember when I, recommended Oshinoko as one of my favorite manga during San Diego Comic Con. Yes. That happened right after the other panel that blew up and everybody was talking about where Ruby confesses that you know that she is not Ruby, she's Sarina and like if you even watch the first episode you do know that the young girl that was dying had a crush on the older doctor. Yes, on the, on yeah. the older doctor. Yeah, and mm-hmm. here's the thing: 
in that context, it's not weird because even back when I was watching it, mm -hmm. I never got the sense that Goto, Dr. Goto, he yeah. had, he liked her that way. I don't think he yeah. ever did. Because a lot of people go, well, he said he'd think about it, marrying her when she turned 16. And it's like, okay, he just said that to be nice. He said yeah. he did not say mm -hmm. that seriously. He knew she was dying. He yeah, knew like there was like zero probability that it was ever going to manifest. Like she yes. was on her deathbed, essentially. Yes. And he knew that. He 100% mm -hmm. knew that. Right? Now, he, how he... just like... Okay. I mean, like this is not uncom uncommon. It, like there has been, you know... Is it strange that a child has a crush on an older person? Debatable, but it does happen. I was about to say, like, I actually, I actually think that's pretty normal. It's that, pretty normal. It's like, pretty normal. I mean, how many, how many times have like literal teenagers had crushes on their high school teachers or their middle school teachers? It happens teachers? all the time. I all mean, I time. had, I thought. Some of my teachers were handsome. Did I act on it? No, that's a completely different thing. Yeah, that is a different but thing. I think it's normal for them to either see celebrities or see someone in their life, whether it be teacher, doctor, whatever, and think, oh, yeah, they're cute. Yes. And maybe aspire like, oh, maybe one day I want someone like so-and-so. Yes, absolutely. But that is completely different from saying that the doctor in the series wanted to actually you know be romantic with a child yes. that he was treating yes there's so many there's so many layers to that that would be so mm -hmm. weird mm -hmm. right yeah and like i said he said he'd consider it when she turned 16 yeah. he never said he would though he mm -hmm. said i'd consider it right which is yeah. that's a di that's different wording than than it, him saying yeah. yes to her you know that's more like just to shut you up like yes <laughs> yes yeah exactly well because like there there was like a story a while back of a girl who was like on her deathbed she was mm -hmm. a literal child like she was like like five years four or five years old something like that she was really young mm -hmm. and and she might have even been younger than that and she wanted to marry her nurse really bad oh yeah, yeah. and they held a it was fake a fake wedding uh -huh. for her and then she i'm pretty sure she shortly passed pretty shortly after that fake wedding right and it yeah, was yeah. it was it was just it was play pretend is what it was it was play you, pretend you for this that? little girl mm -hmm. i feel like it happens quite often with like make a wish kids yes either they want to go out on like a quote unquote date with their favorite celebrity like, it's not uncommon no, That's it's, what we're trying to say. yeah, because it's 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 not meant to be weird. Like it's supposed to be something that helps make you know the child happy, right? Yeah. But like they're not. It's not like the adults are being predatory in this. It's just it's like they're just playing like like you would play house with maybe your yeah. parents. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd be like you want to play house. You want to play dolls. You want to play. You know, it's it's just you know, play dress up. That's essentially what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. So we knew that in Oshinoko that he didn't reciprocate those feelings for her, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's a grown ass yes. man. Though, however, his feelings for I, a little weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say that. I was like, that That was a, that was a little weird. But yeah, yeah, that's weird. And I feel like for any anyone who's not uncomfortable by his feelings for I, you're part of the problem. You're part of well, like the the thing the that fan confuses that... me about like this whole thing is like in that episode as well, like episode one, mm -hmm. the nurse literally asks him if he's a yeah. pedophile. Uh huh. And he's yes. like, no, 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 it's not like that. It's not like that. So I'm like, okay, are we like condemning him now, or is it not that? Because personally, I would have loved it. If they had taken his feelings and it wasn't actually feelings of like romantic feelings and they went like the Toru, Honda and Yuki route where it mm -hmm. was like motherly, like parental love kind of thing. Right. Because like yes. obviously when he's reincarnated as her son, 
like having that be more of like, I care about you a lot and mm-hmm. like a parental way, or even like, I just like, I like, like a soulmate in a non-romantic way. A pl- yeah. Like a platonic relationship. Yeah. Which would have been fine. Mm-hmm. He could still love her, but not romantically, you know? Yes. Uh huh. So this is, so now, you know, we, we fast forward into the series uh, Goro, well, Aqua and Ruby now know that who they were in their past lives to each other. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And Ruby gets really weird. <laughs> she gets so yeah. weird. Because, uh-huh. because like, it, okay. It does make sense that she would still have feelings for the doctor. It would make yes. sense mm-hmm. before she knew who who Aqua was, right? Because part mm-hmm. of her becoming an idol was not only just because of her own dreams, but so that way she could reach out back to him and mm-hmm. and find yeah. him again, right? And she knew that he liked Komachi B and mm-hmm. or is it B Komachi? I don't remember. <laughs> B Komachi, I think. B, is it B mm-hmm. Komachi? Okay, yeah, B Komachi. Right? Like, she's a part of this now, Bikomachi, and, you know, like, she knew how much he loved that, like, group, and, like, she was hoping he'd come to the concert, right? And so she could see him again, right? That's her motivation in all of this. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, that's her motivation in all of this. However, she then finds out that, I know somewhere she finds out he's dead. And I think that's Mm -hmm. before they find out about each other's identities. Is that she finds out he died. That he went missing or he died. Right? And then mm-hmm. she finds out that Aqua is the, is the doctor that she was in love with. But she kind of just jumps right into it. And yeah. <laughs> doesn't really, like, we don't get any, like, internal thoughts from her about, like, I'm conflicted because he's now my brother. Right? And my twin, twin brother on top of that. Mm-hmm. Right? Now... I can't for say for sure say whether this or this is, or this is not happening, but there is a part of me because I I read a thread by your mutual mm-hmm. talking about maybe the nuances in the series, right? And yeah. that it could easily be that we have a case of there is something kind of deeper supposed to be going on, but it's mm-hmm. poorly written. Yeah. Because here's the thing. I don't think it's inherently bad to have problematic themes in your fiction. Mm-mm, right? No. Um, because of the fact that we should be exploring problematic things in a way that doesn't glorify them or romanticize them and mm-hmm. makes them like real, right? Because it can add to the story, right? I think it would be yeah, very interesting for mm-hmm. Ruby, you know, like we see Ruby has this trauma because let's let's be real, being a child with a terminal illness and then dying would probably cause you some trauma. Of course. Like a lot yeah. of trauma. I mean, she like couldn't like she couldn't do much, you know, she could barely walk. She mm-hmm. like she wanted to do things so badly. And she's probably traumatized, right? And something that is pointed that was pointed out in the manga was that Aqua makes a comment about how when Ruby is with other people, he sees how much she has matured. But when Mm -hmm. she is around him, she goes back to being the same 12-year-old girl that he knew in the hospital. Right? Mm -hmm. And to me, that signifies that... Ruby's probably got some trauma going on and she regresses in age. Yes. Around him. Right? Which is like interesting. I think that's interesting. I think that's like, that's like, oh, that's, that's like sad, right? Like that's really sad and really like fucked up, right? But I, I feel like the anime community has taken it and probably also because partially it being poorly written as just like ah yes incest for the win oh yeah it's been incest for the win <laughs> yeah it, it, it's just well the amount of people on twitter i've seen defending incest is 
wild. Dude, I saw this one user just like almost like say it proudly with their chest that they yes. liked the way this was going and like it, it was they liked such incest. a weird i feel like we saw it, the same thread because i saw one problem. where they were just they were just like i like incest stories yes <laughs> right well it was so funny because <gasps> the moment i saw this panel i was like what in the name what, or oh, what, yeah. in the, what in the secret history is this dude when i first saw it and it was just that one panel not the whole thing just the individual panel cropped i was like ah oh, fuck yeah <laughs> i knew exactly the two things that did end up happening the incest fans were all like yes this is what we were waiting for and then you have you know your oceano co-haters just being like oh yeah we told you we told you. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god. It's just like, well, then you had people people misusing the word media literacy, which because it's become that the new too. buzzword, right? Is the media literacy of like clearly it was going to end in incest because of of this yeah. media li literacy is dead, and it's Ruby. Like it's it's a scene where Ruby and Aqua are talking to I forgot her name, but she's the lady who ends up taking care of them. But she was yeah, gonna yeah. blackmail uh I and they were stopping and so they started talking in front of her. And Ruby says she's a certain god who mm -hmm. is the god the goddess of the sun, right? And yes. when you look at the lore of these their the Japanese mythological gods, she and the god of the sun, or the god of the moon, are siblings and get married. Mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, first of all, you dipshit. And it's not media literacy. <laughs> that that is that is just knowing Japanese lore, which I'm sorry, yes. not everybody fucking knows. Media literacy is being able to read a scene and understand the emotions and the subtext of what's going on. Yeah. Media, not media a, literacy not, would be like you knowing that the doctor never meant to actually mar <laughs> like yes, marry Ruby. Yes. The, the yeah. them referencing the gods, these Japanese gods, is called foreshadowing. You dipshits. That's that's <laughs> it's called foreshadowing. Yeah. You're not even using the right word correctly. It is foreshadowing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm just um, like media literacy, my ass. It's foreshadowing. They foreshadowed it. All right, and mm, I did miss mm. it. Oh my god, I missed it. You oh yeah. Know? Like and there's Stella shared that panel with me. I was like, wait. That went over my head. Yeah, that I went didn't... over. I'm like, I didn't even, I didn't even know that. Like, I know a little bit about Japanese gods, just a tad bit. Well, from... I feel like if it most of the time when there's something like that unfamiliar with Western audiences, they'll have like, you know, the it'll be in the back glossary. Where like, this is what this term means. Yes, I didn't see that. No, <laughs> not for that. Well, because like I'm like I didn't think to go look at the lore. I'm sorry. I just well like. I don't need the honorifics explained to me for the 30th time. Like, yes. this would, should have been explained. <laughs> yes. So I was like, you know, like, I just, I just missed that. Like, that's just because someone missed it doesn't make them stupid. It just means mm -hmm. that they missed that foreshadowing because it's like, oh, I like pointing that out. It's just like, oh, yeah, this was going to happen. But instead of calling people stupid, you could just be like, hey, yeah, they foreshadowed this stuff. And you're like, you could be like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. Like, that's mm -hmm. crazy that they foreshadowed it. Because, like, it happens all the time. Foreshadowing happens all the time. In yeah, and Oshinoko is a series where there's a, a ton of foreshadowing. I mean, when I first read Volume 1, it took me hours to read it. Because as I was reading, I was like, oh, wait. They foreshadowed this in within the first few pages. So I kept going, like, back and forth. Like, oh, yeah, there, you could see it. Like, it. There's a ton of foreshadowing in this series. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, there's a ton of it. But just, like, it just, it's just wild to me because it's, like, this has caused, like, so much controversy in the anime community. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it also just reminds me why I hate a lot of anime fans. 
Um, you know, like because I'm I'm like anime fans are the only fans that will defend incest. And the worst part is is they'll go, oh, yeah. well, it's it's just part of their culture. That's just part of their culture. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean part of their culture? Huh? Their culture? You what do I you? I think it's just there's the two sides that I personally hate it. One of them is just the anime bro who's like so gung ho about like yes incest because it's like i don't know edgy or controversial whatever it may be yeah and then you have the fan that does not like oshinoko has not taken the time to watch the anime doesn't mm -hmm. want to read the manga has read the manga but just loves to jump jump on like the hate bandwagon yes and well, also spreads misinformation yes on top of that because they just are not familiar with that work they know that is popular, mm -hmm. but they don't know the actual work. Well, like, here's the other thing, too, is, like, there's nothing wrong with wanting to read things that are, like, have, like, problematic themes, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm. Like, you could, ev you could even read a series that's, like, really not good and not, like, and pretty fuck fucked up and still, like, realize, like, yeah, this is, this is not real and that this is, like, actually fucked up and stuff like that. Like, Here's the yeah. thing. I I hate to admit this, but I love watching Vampire Night. Not because it's good, but because it's so it's an enigma of its own. Like it's drama, it's like, oh, this is so fucked up, man. Like like Kaname and Yuki is like yeah, that's yeah. weird. But it's because it's like it's interesting in a way that like it's entertaining. Do but I would never defend the incest. Like I would never defend like Yuki and Kaname and like all of this shit. Like I wouldn't defend that. I still am like that. Yeah, that's that's pretty fucked up. And I actually think that Yuki should not end up with any of them. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, I can't even I can't even be on a high horse. I re literally read a manga called Mint Chocolate, where yeah. the two step siblings are getting together. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, oh. it's like it's like yes, you can you can intake media and you can read it or watch it or whatever. I think you need to get off of there. Sorry, my cat jumped up on my computer and I <laughs> tower and I was afraid she's going to just turn cat. off my computer. Your cat just wants to, you know, talk about Oshinoko too. She wants, yeah, she wants to talk about Oshinoko. <laughs> you want to talk about Oshinoko? But like, what are you, your thoughts? <laughs> but like you can you can enjoy media even if even if there's things that are actually problematic and even if yeah. they even if they like romanticize them even because like mm -hmm. Vampire Night romanticizes it. But like, yes, yes, yes. but like as a reader, I, I choose to go, yeah, that, that's, that's weird. That's weird. You know, mm -hmm. but like the drama yeah, you, you can too. Be critical of the media that you consume and enjoy. Yes, absolutely. And I will say, I still really like Oshinoko. Do I think it's, <sighs> Here, here's where it's complicated. Yes. I can see some of the intentions. They're just not well executed. No. To the point that people misconstrue, I think, what the author's intentions are and mm -hmm. just kind of make their own shit up. I'm not even going to say lore. They're just making shit up. Yeah. Well, because, like, here's the thing, too, is, like, on both sides, they're not being critical of the media mm -hmm. they're intaking, right? Yeah. Like, on, on the side that's just, like, I hate this, I, like, misinformation, all this stuff, they're not really being critical. They just go, they, they see something and go, that is problematic, therefore it is bad, therefore it is, like, mm -hmm. super bad, right? On the yes. other side of the spectrum, you have the people who are defending the incest, and I'm like, mm -hmm. and, and I'm like mm -hmm. okay, you are also not thinking about this critically, yes. right? Because, like, I know in technicalities that they are... You know, like th that their souls are not actually related X, Y and yeah. Z things and that they remember their past lives. But it doesn't matter in what form they're in. It's weird. Right. Because it it's yeah. like it, in as twins, it's really weird. And mm -hmm. their past life, it's really weird. It's also weird. Yeah. It's also weird. Right. And and I think people forget why incest is bad for some reason. It's like the reason that incest is bad and it's taboo and stuff is two reasons. It's the power dynamic. It is also the genetics 
that can yep. happen. If they had a mm -hmm. child, then, you know, that would be bad for that child. It's just, it's unethical. Mm -hmm. It is unethical. And I know people were like, they should get together. And then they, they, yeah. I mean, it's, I and think then it, I will be reborn. I will be reborn. I do <laughs> yeah, think yeah, it's yeah. kind of funny. Uh, I, I do kind of think it's a little funny because like in a joke, it's like, that's fucked up. That's really yes. fucked up, but it's kind of funny. Uh, but like still, but I don't want that to happen. I'm not like sitting here like that should happen. I'm just like, damn, that would mm. be a wild twist. And I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how. No. I, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> but like, it's okay to be critical. It is okay yeah. to be critical of that media. It's okay to intake like things that are problematic and then realize they are problematic for a reason, right? I mm -hmm. mean, I'm trying to think of sh another show. Like, if there, Peach Girl has a lot of really yeah, yeah. Peach Girl's a mess. <laughs> Peach Girl's a mess. I love Peach Girl because it's so wild. It's such a roller coaster of emotions, and I'm like, it is. It is trash, right? But oh, I yeah. think that's the thing. Is like I enjoy trash anime a lot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's so bad, right? Like I enjoy trash shojo. Like those, like the series you know what that are that actually also trash. Reminds me of? What? Uh, Brothers Conflict. <laughs> don't, even, oh. don't even get me started on Brothers Conflict. <laughs> don't even get me started on Brothers Conflict. Okay, I was young. Okay, when I watched that series, and oh, let me tell God. you, I didn't even get, I didn't even give shit about the girl. I didn't give a shit about any of the ships or anything. I just like Subaru. Okay, as a character by himself, I love him. <laughs> but like. No, that, that, I mean, but the thing is, it's like when it comes to series like that, right? Like, I think, mm -hmm. okay, this is just my theory, the uh, game theory. Um, rest in peace, Matt Pat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he didn't die. No, <laughs> I, he, he did retire. But anyways, here's, here's why I think the, the kind of like the, the brother, sister, like sometimes incest, but mostly I feel like it's usually step siblings. Yeah, trope it, it usually a lot of happens. Step siblings. Mm -hmm. It's because like it puts them in a position of where they have to live with each other, mm -hmm. right? And they and that's like they they need to find an excuse for these two characters to live with each other, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why these like genres are so popular because they get spicy because they have to live with each other, right? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. and that's why like those I feel like those series tend to like be popular is because of that right but then you have but then you have like the actual like incest like animes right like with now kind of yeah. oshinoko or uh orimo is is the like the sister con brother con animes yeah is is that a lot of times the people in taking these animes and enjoying them tend to probably not talk to a lot of girls Right. And like the characters <laughs> in the series probably also tend not to talk to a lot of girls. Well, I mean, I guess Aqua does talk to a lot of girls, but I feel like the reader or the the, the viewer sometimes doesn't. And mm -hmm. the reason they like this trope is because a lot of times those are the girls who have to talk to your main character. Like there is no you can't talk to them. Like, they are your sibling, so you have to talk to them. Like, there's an obligation, right? And yeah, the yeah, reason, yeah. like, I get icked out with these types of storylines is because I knew a guy who was actually a sister con. I, like, I, I'm not even fucking joking. Like, I straight up, I did know a guy. And I, the moment I, like, basically what had happened is that I, I knew this guy, and he talked very weirdly to his sister. Like, he would... Like, try to get her to come on to Discord and, like, get her to talk. But, like, it was just so awkward, uh, right? And at some yeah, point, yeah. like, it was, like, he he wanted to, like, he would, he would like, <sighs> it's so gross. This is so fucking, uh, it icks me out. It icks me uh, out. I icks he, me out, too. But he, like, threatened to, like, tickle her. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I was talking to my friend, another friend of mine, and I who which we both knew this dude. And I mm. and I asked her and I was like, "Hey, 
So I get this really weird feeling that he's kind of a sister con. It, like, do you get that feeling? Because I get that feeling. Or am I going crazy? Like, am I, am I just thinking out? Am I just crazy for this? And she was like, actually, I've been feeling the exact same way, too. Oh, no. And I uh -huh. talked to several yeah. other people and they're like, no, it's fucking weird. And we're like, and he was the type of guy who would like these series, like just straight up. And I yeah, do yeah, remember yeah. him talking one time about how they're like, he's like, he basically tried to ask out a girl one time and she turned him down and he basically went mm, never again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even oh. joking. Like, and it's not even like a joke. Like, it was like he was dead serious. And so, like, it is like I, I know I've talked about this before about how like we have a conversation about like fiction affecting reality, but mm -hmm. but again, I think fiction enables reality. So, like for me to yeah. read something like Oshinoko, I am a full grown adult who is not into that kind of stuff. So I can read that and and be like, yes, this is fiction. This is not real. This is, you know, like this is, I recognize how like this is not okay. And I, as an adult, right? As a full grown adult, I can recognize that, right? However, yes. there are probably people out there who who have these kind of like, like fetishes or these kind of um, mm -hmm. like wants and stuff like that. And they read it to enable themselves, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so mm -hmm. both things can be kind of true at the same time, right? Like there two two things can be true at the same time. And like, it is something like, it is, it is concerning because like I did know someone like that and it was really weird, like really weird. I don't like anime fans. <laughs> uh, it's, they just go, need to go touch some grass meet some girls maybe read some other stuff too yeah read some ex just... expand your library please i'm begging you please like yeah. read something that's like meaningful and thoughtful i don't know like if you want stuff that's like crazy and and, and messed up read banana fish i don't know you know yeah. uh where where yeah. it treats those topics with like care and not just yeah, kind of like to me it just it really does seem like Aka the creator wants to dive into these more you know deeper traumatic experiences and how different characters cope with it and their motivations I, I mean you have think Aka's motivation to... for revenge yeah it's just I... not done well well I don't think it's, it's done, done well and I also think he also wants to cater to uh the people who are into that kind of stuff I think he wants yeah. to do I think he wants to do both to be honest because yeah, like the other it thing, it seems like he is leaning a lot towards like the shock value. Yes. Well, because here's the other thing too is like you, we have this kind of harem for Aqua happening mm -hmm. with Kana, yes. uh, Aqu or Aqua, Kana, Ruby, and uh, Akane. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Akane. Yeah. Akane. Yeah. Uh, like all, like all, like these three girls, right? Mm -hmm. Who are who are into aqua right so we, we've yes. got this kind of harem thing love umbrella going on yeah and it feels like he wants to like have this kind of trope but then also do something deeper with it which i'm yeah. like i feel like this is not the place for it if you want multiple love interests mm -mm. right like it should have been one and then ruby Right. Because then handling Ruby could have been handled differently mm -hmm. um, because like I do think it's interesting to kind of deep dive into Ruby's trauma. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and she has these feelings for for Aqua because she doesn't know how to separate and let go. And because she age mm -hmm. regresses herself to when she was a 12 year old, a sick 12 year old. Right. And she wants to live the life so badly that she got to miss out on as a child in her past life. She never mm -hmm. got to grow up as Sarina, you know, the life that she knew before. She never got to grow up. She never got to like her family. She didn't get to see her grow up. She didn't get to go to school like she didn't get to go to middle school or high school. 
you know, and all that stuff as her past self, she's now this new person. And she, I don't think she necessarily wants to be like this new person fully. Yeah, she's still holding on to her past. Whereas like... Much, much closer than Aqua is. Yes. Well, Aqua was a full grown Mm -hmm. adult when he died. Yes. And Mm -hmm. so he's lived that kind of life, you know, like we actually see something very similar in Noragami. Have you seen Noragami? I haven't. Okay. But I do know Noragami is written by a woman. It is written by a woman. So there is a character. I can assume it's much better executed. Yeah. So there is a character named Yukine and he, Mm -hmm. I love him to death. He is, he's, he's great. He is one of the only characters I have seen in anime who's actually written like a 14 year old. He's written mm. as if he is actually 14. So basically, uh, Yukine is this 14 year old boy spirit who, you know, he has died and he's like kind of a wandering spirit, right? Mm-hmm. And, and Yato comes in and makes him uh, like a weapon, a, a regalia, I think is what they call it, right? And, you know, throughout the series, you know, you see Yukine kind of start to kind of lose it a little bit, right? Because he's 14 year old who who died Mm -hmm. and like they go to a school and he sees like all of these kids who are the same age as him, you know, like playing, hanging out and having fun they're playing on their games, you know, like, like what looks like either Nintendo DSs or like Switches or something like that. And he's like mm-hmm. looking over their shoulders and they can't see him because he's a spirit. Right. But like he mm-hmm. really wants to join in on the fun. Like he wants to be a part of that. And it's really like it makes. Oh, God, it makes I'm, I'm getting sad thinking about it because it's like, yeah, how much he regrets and he he yearns to be to grow up and be with other kids because he died so young and seeing like i would have loved to see something like that with ruby right yeah mm-hmm. and we're not getting that because what happens is yukine kind of goes into the spiral and he kind of has this like is essentially a tantrum but like kind of a really bad tantrum but it was mm-hmm. so normal for a 14 year old to have this kind of reaction that like he like wanted to change things and that he wanted so much to like not be where he is at that moment and that he like he just had so much like pent up rage and anger and sadness and he reacted in a way that I would say a teenager would. And Mm -hmm. so I would have loved to see something like that from Ruby because she didn't get to grow up and have the life in her past life that she wanted, even though she is Ruby now, let's be real. You grow up as yourself and then now you're in a different body and now you have to grow up again and be someone completely different. It's not the same. Yeah. I feel like Ruby should have been the character that people sympathize for. Yeah. And instead, she's a character that I hate in the series. I cannot stand her. It's just the way she's unfortunate. She's just written poorly. Yeah. No, I agree. I 100% yeah. agree. Because, like, I I, I, I... I just get creeped out by her almost all the time. Yes. Well, because she, like, forces herself you know yeah. onto, to him like constantly mm-hmm. and like i and then another reason i can tell that like the that aka kind of wants to have a more deeper story is because you can always tell how something is supposed to come across mm-hmm. by other characters as well yes. too uh-huh. right yeah. because all the other characters are kind of weirded out by what's happening between aqua and ruby Mm-hmm. and and like it's so so the context is is like yeah you're supposed to be like that's weird yes <laughs> you know because there's not a single person that thinks it's normal or like condones it or whatever and it's not like an isolated thing like between them like everyone sees it and like i also just wish aqua would be a little bit more stern with her yeah that i do wish i i still kind of feel like there's a lot of like well well, the thing with aqua is 
at least from where I left off in the manga, he has a, there's been more of a disconnect between his past life and his current life. So a lot of his current actions are just him as Aqua and not the doctor. Yeah. As opposed to Ruby, who, like we've just, we've been talking about, like, she kind of holds on to her past life a little too much. Yes. It's, uh, I don't know. To me, it's like, if you're not acting like the other characters that are completely, like, grossed out by this, you're part of the problem. Like, you're the person that Aka is trying to, you know, provide criticism for, but doing it so poorly that the person can't realize, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, (laughs) yeah, this is... is... Like, maybe I'm that, you know, creeper. I don't know. Because, like, I like I said, it's been wild how many people have been defending the incest, and I'm just like, you guys weird you guys are weird like if you guys want to have like an actual conversation about like what's potentially happening you should yeah but Mm -hmm. like it's weird it is weird to defend something like that like it's so weird to defend like if you want to defend the series and go yeah it's trying to have a deeper meaning but i it's i feel like it's poorly written that's totally fine because yeah. again, you're being critical instead of just being like, ha ha ha, incest, 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 incest. And I'm like, no, there's, this is not a win. This is not the win you think it is. No. It, I was telling Stella this before we started recording. It kind of, I mean, the story is written by Aka and then illustrated by a female artist. And I just feel like they're both just like going and like there's, they're honestly, just parallel they're not connecting with one another i get a lot more of that of the true intentions by the way the facial illustration like the facial expressions are illustrated yes as opposed to like the actual writing yeah the actual <laughs> writing. it's just kind of like eh, i don't know if you guys are on the same page here yeah look and, and, and like anyone listening like we're not I hope no one thinks we're defending incest because we're not. <laughs> so There's... I'm, I'm still reading it very critically. Because like I... I want to, I want to, you know, have things like be critical with this media, right? Like I want things to be critical. I want to be critical because if we're not critical, you know, with what we're intaking, like you should be able, like it makes you smarter. By the way, if you can, if you can yes, be critical of your of your media and not like just jump to like it's bad therefore uh it's it's bad yeah another thing i want to point out this whole like conversation perfectly illustrates that oshinoko's target audience are not minors like if you are oh absolutely a kid this is not your series no it was never marketed to be a series for kids because they just see the kiss and they're like, oh, wait, which, is it, yeah, is rightfully show, so, is should it be gross out. Or is it a seinen? It's a seinen. That's what I thought. I, was, I thought it was a seinen. Yeah, yeah. that's a seinen. Love is War, I think that's the shonen. No, I think that's seinen too. Seinen? Yeah. Yeah. I never watched, I tried watching Love is War. I could, couldn't finish it. I got bored. I did, I did force myself to watch it. It wasn't my goal. I just I don't like I just didn't first of all, I didn't find it like super funny and also like yeah I don't know I didn't find the romance very romance-y mm-hmm. you know it just was fine I guess I don't know like it felt like a romance not for me <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah not not for me yeah. it was just not not for me I have been watching the I'm, I am a little behind but I have been watching the seventh time loop though that series is pretty good. Um, if you haven't watched it, uh, but or and and for those who probably haven't heard of it, but it, it's basically about a girl who, uh, she keeps getting not like reincarnated. She's like stuck in a time loop, essentially. Mm. 
So like each of like basically like she dies and then she goes back to a certain point in her life and then she leaves and then something like basically she can do whatever she wants with her life and she just keeps going back. Like every time she dies, she goes back to that one point in her life. Uh, like it's like a respawn point essentially. Mm -hmm. But like she goes yeah, through yeah. like her different lives doing different things. Like she's a doctor in one and then she's like a she's a merchant in another and then she's like a knight in one and like. And then, you know, so she's like had lived many lives, essentially. Mm. Um, and then she meets uh, a king uh, who, well, he's a prince, I guess. He's the prince uh, who ends up killing her in the life she just lived. And then he falls in love with her and she mm. and him uh, get engaged, essentially, because she's like, you know what? I'm tired of working. I'm going to live my life as a spoiled, <laughs> pampered princess, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so good. It's actually so good. Like, it's it's really good. So I would definitely suggest that series. It's very good. And uh, The Apothecary Diaries is about to wrap up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been keeping too. up with um, A Sign of Affection. I need, to, I need to watch that still. Oh, it's good. I like it. I, it you, can, you can definitely tell how involved the... Uh, the mangaka and the artist were involved in this one. Yes. Well, anything else you got to say? Anything else we we need to About mention? Oshinoko, uh, be critical said. of the media you consume. Yes. But also, if you have not read said media, don't talk out of your ass. Because <laughs> it's just... It's, it, honestly, what I saw on my Twitter timeline was just the bros defending incest and then the Oshinoko haters not knowing what the hell they were you know I... mad about but they were just mad about it <laughs> okay i will say i haven't read it i did watch the anime uh but i also looked into like all the panels and like all the stuff and tried to gather information so all of my opinion and what i is just basing off of what i've seen but like so i could be wrong we could be wrong i don't know you know, like, I, we could be wrong, but that's why discussion is good. <laughs> be mm. nice in the comments. Yes. YouTube, specifically. Not, not you, obviously, Spotify and Apple users, but, you know, you know who you are. YouTube it's comments. It's meant, for, it's meant for adults, for yeah. a reason. Yes, yes. <laughs> this well, is the I, reason. Well, I think that probably wraps up this episode then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Bye.